I think law schools have become extremely selective in the last decade, though of course it depends on the school. At this school, the University of Florida, the ratio is one out of 10 to 15. In other words, for every 10 to 15 applications we get, we only take one student. Um, and that's a pretty competitive atmosphere. The joke among faculty members always is, gosh, I'm glad I went to whatever school I went to when I did because I couldn't get in there today. In the 30 seconds I have to whip through the application, I can't really figure out much about you except what your grades and your, your LSAT were. And it's all a question of playing the odds. Law schools are big bureaucratic institutions. Uh, they do not have the time or the money to look for special personal characteristics in the applicants and so forth, because there are thousands of applicants and they're going to admit hundreds and hundreds of them. My name's Braden Metcalf. My name's Katie Edson. Uh, I'm Reese, I um, just graduated from Baylor University. My name is Stephanie Simon. Uh, my name is Tisha McMinn. My name's Corey King, I'm 26. My name is Ron, I'm 41 years old, I'm old decrepit, but in spite of all that, I've decided to go to law school. I am 22 years old. I just moved back to Norman from Dallas. I went to school at SMU. My dad is a doctor and my mother's a nurse, so they're not exactly friendly with lawyers. What I am expecting is to have to work very hard and um, be completely different than undergrad. I'm 23. I'll be 24 in December. I'm from Sulphur, Oklahoma. Do me to look at you or the camera? I'm going to be 22 years old and I'm headed to University of Oklahoma for law school. A uh, little anxious about that. I went to University of Oklahoma for undergrad too and I majored in political science. I wasn't as much concerned with my studies because I played basketball. I went to undergrad at Pepperdine University in Malibu, California. Uh, and then I worked for about five years as the HR human resource manager, HR consultant. My lot in life is my lot in life, and mine just happened to be with six kids, and so it's not like I'm getting rid of any of them to come to law school, so I'm coming with six kids. I don't know exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life entirely. I'd like to just, I mean, be a little more marketable. I think it'll help me in the long term as far as learning how to think and learning, you know, before I do anything, what are the legal consequences of this. I didn't get into University of Texas um, uh, when I applied, so the decision was very tough for me because that's where I've always wanted to go uh, from when I've started uh, at Baylor. Uh, and so to go to University of Oklahoma was a tough decision. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, I have a family and four children that I have to take care of at the same time. Not only that, I also uh, uh, teach at University of Oklahoma and, and at other places in order to uh, uh, feed my mouth as well as my children's mouth. Law school for me is going to be 8 to 6, um, you know, Monday through Friday, and then I know I'll have to piece in times on the weekends, but for the most part, I have to have my evenings free to, to spend with my son. He's not going to get any of my attention during the day. I actually was a part of the um, early admissions program at OU. It's a group of about 20 of us, and we're admitted, and we take um, two classes in May, so I actually just finished that about uh, two weeks ago. I think based on that alone, I'm really looking forward to law school with um, high expectations of myself. Life is so different for some people. Like, even I've heard it here, I've wanted to be a lawyer all my life. That's not my story. You kind of want to set the mark for those that come behind you. And I just felt the need to raise the bar. Hopefully I can pass and graduate. Um, I've never had a problem with academics before. I don't think I will this time, but um, you never know. Good morning and welcome to the University of Oklahoma College of Law. I think most of you know that uh, for every one of you that's here, there were four or five or six who want to be that are. So indeed, you are select, you are the elect. We think that you have come to a place that is transforming. This truly is the first day of the rest of your life. Your time here will change the way you view the world. We hope that it changes you for the better. We believe it does but it will indeed change you. Orientation, wow. 
Uh, well, they get us they get us scared at some points. Now it's a reality, you know, sitting in a courtroom type of setting. So I was like, this is this is gonna be here on Monday. This is a uh, cool person repellent. Put this on, and I, pretty much I everyone knows like stay so away from you. What's the fourth class? Tort, Sig Pro, Con Law, and what else? Contracts. Contracts, that's it. There are approximately 160 students in the incoming class, and we're broken up into four equal sections. Each section has approximately 40 students, and together with your section, you take all four of your first semester classes together with the same 40 people. The first year classes are constitutional law, civil procedure, contracts, and torts. In medical school, you're, you're learning the bones of the hand, for example, or something like that. And we're not doing that. It's not just a, a digested set of information. We're trying to teach you how to take facts and plug them in and solve a problem. I'm impressed with how friendly everyone is. I didn't expect that. I don't know if they're trying to make us feel more at ease and then attack us on Monday, but I'm excited, but a little bit apprehensive. At the very beginning, you're getting used to this whole new environment and there's a lot of adrenaline and a lot of excitement. We work hard to get the credentials to get to law school. People are just excited about being in this environment. The great thing about law is that it is a general discipline which attracts people from a wide range of backgrounds who are looking to do a wide range of things outside when they're done with law school. Take advantage of it. You learn more from your classmates than you ever will from your professors in terms of life lessons, lasting things. When you graduate from law school 10 years from now, 20 years from now, what you're going to remember is your first year section. That's what you're going to remember. You're not going to remember your second year, you're not going to remember your third year. It'll sort of, sort of be a blur. At this point, I'm going to ask each student called up front to discuss a case, the same question. What is the issue of this case? What I want is for you to go through the facts and to pull out the essence, the core issue that you think is decisive in the way the case is resolved. The Supreme Court and every court of appeals in the country requires lawyers to state the issue presented right at the beginning of their briefs. That means that this is a particularly important skill for you to learn so you can present the very best case for your client when real issues go before real courts in your career. You just hear these horror stories that, about law school that uh, you see in the movies and, and reading books, but, uh, but no, the nervousness was still there, you know, afraid to get called on. Uh, I think uh, Professor Tefker like said it best, you know, if you get called on a day, you'll remember it for the rest of your life. He did call on somebody before he even said hello. He just walked in and said, Mr. Roberts. For me, it's a lot of fun. I, I usually teach in the, early in the morning and on a Monday, so I usually have the students. My class is usually their first law school class ever. And um, I'll look at their pictures the night before or the morning of pick out three or four people and memorize their faces. And so before I ever get to the podium, I walk into class. I'll wait till after the bell rings, walk into class. And as I'm walking, I'll scan the room, find one that I've memorized their, their face and their name and call on them, looking at them directly in the face. And um, they're scared, <laughs> to say the least. What is it, three or, three or four more classes to go that hopefully I can not get called on first in any of those and get a feel for how the professor teaches before I can get thrown into the fire. And everyone that I've like heard they talk about their classes because it's so funny all the one I was like meeting the hall and like have you had this class yet and everyone's just like what did, how, what did you have to do?
the realities of actually being in law school is definitely here, and uh, just uh, kind of praying I can I can handle all all the stress of it. But uh, but I'm really enjoying it, and uh, hoping hoping it all goes well. That was the longest week of my life. The it just seemed like it was never going to end. It said, uh, yeah, I could not wait for the weekend to come, and then the weekend came and it flew. I think a guy in our section is having some kind of get together on Thursday, party or something, so everybody can meet and greet out of school. And so that'll be a good way to get to meet more people in our section as well. They, they seem very nice, uh, the people that I, that I bumped into, and, and, uh, uh, but I'm a little older. I've got a heart that's about 19, you know, uh, and so I, I don't, uh, but I, I know I look older. Uh, I, I know I look out of place to them, I, I, I know that, but I don't feel it. Having not been in school for a while, it just, um, just trying to remember what people were like in school and what do you do, what do you wear to school, and um, like I didn't really have a choice when I was doing my graduate work. I was at work all day and so I'd go straight from work and so I didn't have time to think about did I look right or was I comfortable? Like, I had to wear whatever I had to wear. Dalton, they went inside. Hey, sugar, remember, mommy? Because it's bedtime, okay? Hey, five more minutes, okay? Just real quietly, please. Thank you. Thank you. You pushed me down here. I didn't. This is not how my studying's gonna be. <laughs> Read a line, parent a line. Um, mama got food, mama. I know you have food in your mouth. Okay. I hear from students a lot that law school feels to them physically a lot like high school because of the class hours and the um, lack of study space. Often there's not good places to go to eat. There's not uh, a lot of control of the schedule. And so a lot of adult personal freedoms tend to disappear. And I think that um, surprises students. I, I think it um, sneaks up on them. There are bells at the beginning and end of the hour. Everybody has a locker. People tend to gossip about faculty members and who's doing what. Whereas, you know, at college, you see some group of people in your English class, and you see another group of people in political science, another group of people in your outside activities, another group of people when you go home to the sorority house. So there is more of this kind of we're all one group for this first year. And I think that can both be empowering because you can get your group of friends there and your study group. But it can also sometimes lead to some tensions just because just like when you're with your family all the time, you feel like, you know, all those little things that make you kind of irritated. The first common concern is the vocabulary. Students can't believe that they'll have to read 10 pages two, three, four, five times to understand, or they'll have to sit with a dictionary the first couple of weeks and look up almost every word in a case. And so you have highly accomplished students who are admitted to these law schools who all of a sudden feel like they're children again. I mean, I felt like I was like in elementary school again or something. You know, I don't have any of these, these experiences. I'm not married, I don't have kids. I didn't do a fifth year in college. You know, I don't have a master's. It's some, you know, some people have master's, you know, I'm just like, gosh. You know, um, I don't have significant work experience aside from summers, you know? And so, I mean, at first it was like, you know, should I have waited to come and done what they've done? What are you reading for? Well, right now, it's uh, Torch tonight. Um, well, it was common law, then I moved to Torch. So I'm also going to try to do some civil procedure, hopefully, and, and look over some contracts. That's grabbing some contract books right now. For right now, on Mondays at least, I'm just going to do my weekly readings and start focusing on reviewing towards the end of the week. That's what I find to be most effective. But there's no grade, so I don't know how effective it is yet. <laughs> It's an adjustment, that's for sure, <laughs> to make your schedules fit. It's not, it's not undergrad anymore. <laughs> All right, you ready? Hey, Corey! 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 Hey, Corey! Yeah! Catch, Corey! I kind of
kind of limit myself a lot and think, well, everyone will just see me as a single mom and um, they won't see me as having anything to bring to the table other than maybe like potluck. I guess Dalton's my best friend in law school. D-Train, would you put a shirt on? No. Something to be proud of. This sounds terrible, but it's hard to be like everyone else. <laughs> everyone was talking about their weekends and, you know, what would you do this weekend? <laughs> I dig up some bushes in my front yard. Um, I had a play date for Dalton. Everyone was naming like the multiple parties and stuff that they went to. I don't know, there's something kind of isolating about it, to me at least. Um, I'm used to having a lot more kind of interaction with people and feeling like the stuff that I'm doing um, has a more profound effect, I guess. Right now, everything just seems kind of me focused. Like I'm just studying, I'm not contributing to society at all. And um, I don't know. And then just realizing that like I'm starting over with no friends. <laughs> Often people who come to law school are in transition anyway. They, they've just finished undergraduate school or they've left a career or they've moved to a new area. So they're people who are in a life transition. Law school ends up making larger time demands than uh, students had become accustomed to after four years of uh, undergraduate school and whatever time, you know, in, in jobs that they'd spent. For anyone, it's probably twice the time they spend an undergraduate on anything. I think an undergraduate students are able to go to class, hear a lecture, perform well on the exam. In law school I think that's practically impossible. What I generally tell them is a lot of reading and a lot of uh, material to digest. What I also tell them is not rocket science. It's not hard in that sense. What, what it requires is a certain discipline. And it requires a discipline because nobody's directing you. I set my arm to my TV and turn on. Stay quiet. And then I just get up when my phone goes off. Set my arm to my phone. The sound of the quietest pickup. to reach your goals in life. Yeah. Throw on my hat. Maybe find some pants if I'm lucky. I'll usually lay in bed longer and watch Sports Center. Maybe. But I like to have my shower in by 7 at least when I get up at 6.30. So I like watch the news on the Today Show at the very beginning, and then I'll usually head to school, and I still have Torch Street for today in Conlon. So Torch will take a good 30 minutes, so I need to get there early. In Conlon, I'll do in between Torch and Conlon, so. Um, it's a typical day, pretty much. All of this is for afternoon classes.
think at this point, things are well, but that doesn't mean that they're easy, but they're well. Alternative interpretation number one, the court has power to issue a writ of mandamus when it has jurisdiction. I feel like you're in the midst of a tornado or something, all these things are going around you. I guess I think it should all be coming together and it's only the third week of school. Look on page 29 where the court is raising that particular issue and it says, thus the state through its tribunals may compel persons to domicile within its limits to execute in pursuance of their contracts respecting property elsewhere situated, instruments in such form and with such solemnity as to transfer title. It's hard, like I think it's going to get harder now that I'm getting into my, you know, I know what I, I know what's going on. This is what my schedule is going to be. If I didn't go till five o'clock, it would be what I expected. I figured I could have got out at like two, and had till t the next day to, and I think that would be like crucial as far as like feeling less pressure. An entity or a person, he, she, or it, must have <coughs> minimum contact with the forum state if we're dealing with specific jurisdiction. There's a certain point. I just feel that the reading I'm doing and the time I'm putting in is not worth the return that I'm getting from what I'm learning. Besides, you learn everything and you already think you know the concepts and everything and you go into class and they focus on something totally different. I think that people come into law school with an idea that um, it's going to be about memorizing a series of rules and repeating what they've learned from previous learning experiences, that's what, they, what they've learned. But that's really not what law school is about. This is the beginning of an experience of developing and perfecting skills that aren't acquired overnight. In many ways, it's a lifetime. The key thing when you're a lawyer is that you're a problem solver. You're faced with a new situation, a new problem, a new question. And you have to take what you know and what you can find out and then creatively apply that to the new situation. It is different because you're reading cases. And reading cases is very different from reading you know, a textbook. It's not just about reading those cases, but it's about being able to brief the cases, being able to spot what the legal issues are in the case and to state what the rule of law is and to make the arguments on both sides. In undergraduate school, because of the lecture format, most of the time the professor is spoon feeding the students, telling them what is right, what is wrong, what they should know, what they shouldn't know. In law school, at least half the time, what the students are getting is questions and not answers to the questions that are rising in their mind. And that can be very frustrating, especially to the first year law student. It will change the way you think. The first year will tear you down. You will never think the same way again. And the second semester in particular and then the following two years will build you back up, will make you a clearer, more rational, and more critical thinker. The Socratic method is intimidating. It's not intended to be intimidating, but simply having your name called out in a room of 45 other people is intimidating. I mean, you're worried that you won't remember what you're supposed to know or that you didn't focus on the right things or the professor will embarrass you or hurt your feelings. The objective is to get the student to work his or her way to an answer that they didn't know they knew. That's real hard. Sovereignty. State sovereignty. Or federal authority. Right, or Tenth Amendment, where it's silent and it's yielded to the states. Power is yielded to the states. I would have thought that that is a kind of cooperation between nation and state that one would expect of two police forces essentially pursuing the same goals. Well, they're just not allowing the states to choose how to regulate. They're saying you must regulate this way or these will be your uh, choices. I mean, you're allowed to attach incentives to bills and everything like that, or 
They're basically saying the states are We're saying anything substantively to New York and the states about how they should take care of the problem. About 25% of the way through the class, they know that I'm not going to bite, I'm not going to scold, I'm not going to yell. Um, I think they're mainly fearful that their own classmates are going to judge them harshly. And uh, I don't know how to relieve them of that, uh, of that fear. As I travel around the country talking to law students, one thing that I, I try and impart is you are the consumer. You are actually paying the law school to educate you. So don't fear the process that you're paying for. Some of my colleagues will basically tell students when they're going to be responsible for being called on. I don't do that. Everybody is uh, fair game every day. I like for all of them to, to have read the cases, to be prepared, and uh, so that it, uh, I consider the whole class joining together in the learning process. And if you're sitting back there saying, I know I'm not going to get called on, uh, you may be thinking about other kinds of issues rather than what's going on in the classroom. It's overwhelming the first time your name's called out in front of these people you don't even know. And you're sitting there going, did they think I was an idiot? Did I say the wrong thing? You know. A lot of this peer pressure for me is not there at all. I mean, it's not there at all. And so to suggest I don't know is not a big deal. I mean. I'll laugh about it later and, and that'll be that. Or even just uttering the wrong answer. I don't know. I watch students who flub up in class. Um, we all flubbed up in class. But they will often come into my office and say, I flubbed up in class. Law school's not for me, right? You want to tell me now? Just give it to me straight. I should leave today. I wasn't cut out for this. I'm terrible. No, look around you. So did everybody else flop up in class. Uh, it happens. You're learning. Nobody catches the ball every time it's thrown at them, especially when they've never had one thrown at them before. And so one of his defenses is, hey, this law is unconstitutional. So the court strikes down the law and says, this is outside of Congress's coverage. Why does the court do that? It's so funny. We're sitting in constitutional law in a uh, Scott Berlander, our professor, starts talking about how some of how these affirmative action plans are so unconstitutional and blah blah blah. And Corey like raised her hand. She's like, mm, "Part of me." Well, just to clarify, and I don't know, like it's the <laughs> the gods of stupid talk instructed me to speak, and I don't know why I said anything. But I was like, well, actually, you know, just to clarify, the courts haven't said that it's permissible. The courts have, in fact, said that it's a must because as a federal contractor, you're required to create and maintain affirmative action plans. And he said, well, there's a good chance those plans are unconstitutional. And I said, well, regardless, I wrote 54 of them last year at the direction of the government. So far be it from me to tell the federal government that something they're requiring me to do in order to maintain my federal contractor status is unconstitutional. And then I just thought, you're going to have a miserable semester if you don't learn how to shut your mouth. She's going to have a, a big leg up on everyone else. You can already tell that. But I mean, she's also, I mean, the leg up that she has is going to be hard because she has a son. It's just interesting to see how I have nothing holding me back. Like, there's no reason why I should not do really well. So this is the present access for only for current and former players. That's one of my favorites. This is when we are in the final four and we're all yelling. Um, um, where am I? Right there. Right there. I walked on as a freshman here at OU and then I got a scholarship my sophomore year. I earned, my God, I earned a scholarship my sophomore year and then um, I was always a backup, I mean, always. I actually was a post, like one time, because we had too many injuries. 
And then um, my senior year, once again, because we had injuries, I got to start. And then that wasn't very, it was pretty short lived because then I had a season ending knee injury. But moral of the story is I had to play a position that I shouldn't have had to, but because I was willing to do that, I got to start my senior year. That's it. There. Mm -hmm. People who want to be warriors are probably a bit more competitive than other sorts of people. It's a profession that puts a premium on competitiveness. It's sort of they're competing in some sense against themselves. So you have an intensity, um, but there isn't the kind of cutthroat competition. I haven't ever seen the kind of cutthroat competition that is sort of legendary in law school, the cutting pages out of the books and things like that. I think most of this is a myth. I think that there's this idea that feeds this competitive a uh, hostile learning environment energy. The paper chase certainly contributed to that. Maybe I'm not going to Xerox it. What does that mean, maybe you're not going to Xerox it? This is a great outline, fantastic. If yours doesn't stack up, you won't get a chance to look at it. Bell's going to have his outline Xerox just like Ruth. Maybe Bell is, and maybe Bell isn't. I was going to let you see it for it, but I changed my mind. And as far as the robot pimp goes, I was never going to let that pimp see it anyway. Get out! You get out of my study room! It's a pleasure, you <laughs> I didn't see the paper chase, so I don't know all the nightmare stories of law school, but you do get this idea that it's going to be this competitive environment, and I found that it's not. I do have a sense of there are very smart people in these classes. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I do have a sense of that. But I don't have a sense of, okay, where to, how do I compare to this person to this person? I don't, I don't do that. I think people are, everyone's kind of watching each other to see who's, you know, who's doing what. And, and you know, the simple fact is when you don't have anything to, to measure it against, you do look to your peers to, to see comparatively how you're doing. I can see it within just little things people do in the way they act. And, and I don't know if people think, oh, she's competitive, she studies a lot. but. I have to study a lot. Like, it's not that I'm trying to outwork anyone. I read very slowly. I mean, I'll admit it. I mean, things like that take me longer to get through, and it takes me longer to comprehend what I want to know. And so sometimes I feel like I am putting in more time, but I'm not getting more out of it. You know, I feel like, like an undergrad, I never miss class or anything like that. So, I mean, just not missing class, I was ahead of the game because so many people skipped, you know. Here, everybody goes to class, and everybody's working hard. So, you know, you've got to try to, I mean, it's not, like I'm trying to be competitive, but at the same time, I just want to make sure that I'm going to do well. You know, you get in law school and they puff you up that you guys are the best of the best. And, and then there's, I guess, um, just always this comparison thing. And I guess you can get caught up in that and then kind of lose focus. And so um, I heard a, a preacher say, he said, run your own race. And that was like an epiphany for me. <laughs> And I'm, that was the most liberating words I could say I heard. And then for me, law school became something different. I just am here to run my own race. Why are you talking to... Uh, <laughs> the hi! Ooh, does it work? Yeah, thank you. Who's dancing with Tisha? All of us. All of Not me. Not me. Everybody. Not us. Good afternoon. Do we have any God has always helped me keep my balance. Uh, law is not law school is not the worst thing in my life that's ever happened. <laughs> So, not that this is a bad thing, but it's not the most challenging thing that's ever happened to me in life. And, and because I'm here and because I'm okay, I know that there is something greater than me. And so I will always seek the Lord in whatever it is in my life that I face.
I hear everybody say, you know, you're a superwoman. Oh, I can't believe you do this, and I can't believe you do that. And to me, I am just normal. I am just who I am. And, but I really had to come to the realization, Tish, you really are raising six kids trying to go to law school. And that is a bit much. I mean, it really, really is a bit much. Well, you even gonna follow me around the house. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Others in the community, we have a role, too, to children. And I know that from my life experiences because I did not have a mother being raised. So I know that somebody else can make a difference in my life, and I know that somebody else can make a difference in children's lives. And so it is my hope that I can be that person that they may say, my life is not like this, but Tisha showed me this. Just plant a seed and make a difference. Hi, Katie. What are you studying in law school? Well, I'm reading a case about a daughter versus her car dealer dad who won't buy her new car, and the court ruled that she deserved one. So, how about this new old Zolero for Bruiser and me? Sorry, Katie, but on appeal, Katie versus Wayne Edson, verdict overruled. I object. Sick him, Bruiser. My parents have owned a car dealership for 33 years and have been in Sulphur for 33 years, been married 37 years. So I think I've grown up with the values of coming from a good family who is very supportive and loving and caring. I think I owe all my success to my parents. I mean, you've got to figure out who you are because you can't be what everyone else is going to be in law school. You know, you've got to realize what's important to you and not get caught up in the little things. But it's hard to run the course without veering off. Like with any obstacle in life, any path, even a race. I mean, you may have a race planned out exactly how you want to run and where you're going to walk and where you're going to get water. But ultimately, things change. People get in your way in a race. People may run, bump into you. You may get a cramp. You may get set back. And that's, I think that's, you can compare that to law school because you don't realize what's going to come in the path you've set out to be. And you are going to veer off, but you just got to get back on and keep going. There's, I mean, and every law school has a grapevine. It's a gossip mill, and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that the, this community of people live so closely, the students in particular, um, live, eat, uh, sleep law school. The most important thing is to be, be yourself and be true to yourself. Uh, not to be swayed by the herd instinct. All the programs for entering students, you know, somebody always will say, make sure you keep your life in balance. If you're married, make sure you're spending enough time with your family. Uh, you know, go out in the evening uh, occasionally, uh, and so on. But it is hard to get that message across. It's, it's hard for students to you know, appreciate how important that is. You could, especially your first year of law school, spend 80% of your time doing nothing but learning what you need to learn in law school. But you don't want to drive yourself crazy. There's more to life always uh, than just the thing you're working on. Relax. Study hard, but relax. I mean, you're going to do much better in everything, in every aspect of life, if you relax while you're doing it. See, this is the beauty of law school, volunteering. Lawyering is about helping people. And if you don't get a certain amount of satisfaction out of helping someone do something, you're not going to like practicing law very much. Because whatever you're doing, you're usually working to assist someone in accomplishing some objective. And there's a lot of satisfaction in that for some people. Other people don't enjoy it so much. More important than living a balanced life is to keep law school from changing you for the worse. In other words, 
you should be a human, whoever you are, you should be that human being when you show up to law school. And then you should add your legal training to that. But when you're done here, you should be that human being with a law degree. You get involved in law and it pretty much just encompasses you. It's all you think about and every aspect of your life you analyze like a lawyer. I want someone that can understand me and can talk to me about, you know, what I, I go through every day. Everybody told me not to ever date anyone from my section because if it goes bad, you're stuck with them for, you know, seven months and every time you see each other, you know, she'll either hate you or you'll hate her uh, to sit across the room or sit next to each other for the next five months in law school and despise each other or be jealous or just the typical relationship stuff when things do go bad. It was. I didn't even know you, really. I knew you were in my section. I knew he was this guy in my section, but I didn't know exactly who he was. So we're all standing in a group, and a couple people were commenting on how there aren't very many attractive girls who go to law school. His response to me was, wow, that's pretty good for a girl like you then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> who could have ever imagined something like you would have come along? I would have been interested in someone You're like that. What? What? <laughs> First coming into law school, I figured it would be nice to have the escape away from law school. You know, have something to talk about other than constitutional law with your significant other. You like the new hairdo, Brandon? I like the teased look. Maybe you could get some crimping going on. But it's nice to be able to come home and share stories about the cases that you've been working on. Nikki helps me work harder, and I think I help Nikki relax a little bit. A little bit. Really worked out well for me. Law school itself is a bit overwhelming now. <laughs> I feel like I'm so behind, it's not even funny. But I don't know, I hope that's how everybody else feels. There's a difference between reading and then actually studying. I haven't actually started studying for law school. I'm just prepared for class. You know, we're, we're kind of looking at each other kind of in a dumbfounded way, going, okay, we're halfway through. This isn't clearing up. Nothing seems to be clearing up. I mean, the finals are really great, so that's what I'm thinking about all the time. But as you get to this point, you get to, wow finals are coming, you know, and then it's like, am I ready to take a final? You don't even think you know. Long-term little stressors wear you down as much as big traumatic events. And what I think happens in the first year of law school is it's just like a water torture. It's just day after day after day of being under the gun, you don't have a day to cut class. You don't have a day to go take a walk in the park. It's steady, steady, steady as she goes. A certain amount of this is endurance. And that's why students who build their endurance over the semester tend to do better. You get a little bit more fatalistic. You, you realize what you can do and what you can't do. And you're competing constantly against people who's, who, whose lives revolve around law school. I mean, absolutely revolve around it. There's nothing I can do. I mean, I stay up till 2 o'clock at night, and then I go through another day, and you can only do that for so long. You know, I'm old, I'm tired, I've got multiple sets of things to do at the same time. Um, and so it's not a not as concentrated as I'd like. Ah. Questions, yes, I want that. Uh, I had to make up an exam. There's their test. And uh, putting together the papers seems somewhat, uh, kind of, like I said, in the way. 
it's just another part of that deal. Wouldn't be so bad if there was an elevator. See, you can hear from here. They're an unruly group. Yeah, that's what, what it is. All right. There are people out there that think my life is very interesting. It's just not me. I've got all your exams. We can talk about the test. Shall we talk about alliances for about 10 minutes? Yeah, what's the deal with Mary Jane? What chapter are we in? 10. Corporate governance. Huh? No, 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 you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. There's no way you're in chapter 10. You're in chapter 9. We didn't skip chapter 9. That's kind of the story of my law school life. I've got so many things going on at the same time that uh, um, I have to give a little. Right. Now we're going to do the real stuff. But then again, there's that competitive side of me that wants to keep pushing and, and do things that I know that I can do. But at the same time, it's very frustrating. They don't let people in? He can feel it. I know he can. He's four, but he can feel it. He got hysterical, and he didn't want to leave my parents' house, and he was sobbing, and he called me an idiot and a butthead, and, um, and then he said, I hate you, and um, he's never said that. So um, that was, <laughs> it, you know, it, you can't help but say, what have I done to make my child hate me. And I know kids always say that about their parents. But um, I can help but kind of think, wow, does he, am I gone that much? Or am I um, that not fun that he, he hates me? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's non-law school. So, maybe law school inspired. But Maybe just four-year-old inspired. Three weeks till finals, it's kind of stressful. <laughs> um, thinking about taking all the TVs out of my apartment so that I'll actually get something done. I mean, you can start really picking up the people who are, are starting to think about finals at least a lot more seriously. So, I mean, it makes you think about it a lot more seriously too. You can feel the tension 
and you can see the stress in people's eyes and like they're not sleeping as much and you know it's beginning I don't know it's just overwhelming I think there's a time particularly in that first year a few weeks before the exam people start freaking out when they realize it's a hundred percent of the grade on one final exam I've had no feedback I don't know where I stand up until the exam virtually everything they do in the class is for reputation and pride only uh, there's just not a correlation between what happens in the classroom in terms of class presentation, class discussion, uh, and uh, what happens on the examination. Um, I took on the Edmund, so I gotta run and go pick him up. And then I'm gonna come right back, but traffic's gonna be boogery right now. Why don't you just call me when you get home? Okay, you wanna do dinner, laundry, movie, or you wanna, whatever. I can dinner, take laundry, in. study. Dinner, laundry, study. I didn't realize that was part of the equation. Well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> always. That's always part of Nikki's equation. There are some people who, no matter what they're doing, they feel guilty if it's not schoolwork. We now have officially today and one more day left in the first semester, which is a good thing. Nice reminder to back to And if you have questions you want me to answer, at the end of December 4th, when class closes officially for us, I will not speak to any of you via phone, email, otherwise. So if you have questions about this class in preparation for this final, I have to have them before we break. Because I don't want students who are here or find me in the building at a particular time to feel they have an undue advantage or other than undue burden. So the preparation for this examination has to occur all the way up through December 4th. That's when it stops. Is that clear? There's a couple of people in our section that He's like studied every waking minute since the beginning, and now he's kind of get like, kind of getting this like big attitude, like, oh, I feel sorry for you people who are just now thinking that you're gonna study, da da da. And I'm just kind of like, get off your high horse. I mean, just because you've been studying doesn't mean you're gonna make the best grade. I hate to tell you. I mean, I don't usually leave till the library closes, and I just figure it's for one month of my life. So, I mean, I don't even know if I'm gonna do well. I'm just trying to do well, and I don't want to look back and say. I could have done better, so I'm going to give it, give it all right now. The first examination is the examination I gave out in the year 2000. It was a three-hour exam. Your exam will most likely be four hours, possibly four and a half. I guess my competitive spirit is um, kicked in, and I actually I want to do well. I want to, um, I want to try to really do as well as I can, especially since this semester, of all six semesters, this is clearly the most important. It's kind of scary that in a month from now I'll be done with my first semester of law school. Hopefully they'll allow me to come back for a second, but... Well, you know, college exams, we remember what that was like. You put on the boots, you grab the shovel, and you start slinging. Law school doesn't work that way. You get zero credit for knowing the stuff. All the credit is for applying the stuff to the fact pattern, and that is what it means to think like a lawyer. And that's what they don't understand. You're not just going to memorize stuff. This isn't like undergrad where the game was, you know, if you, if you can repeat what I told you in class, you're going to get an A. There is a real problem in some students in the first year in expressing what they know. So you can read a test and you really know this person was there, they got it, they studied, they probably do know it, but for some reason there's a problem between knowing it and getting it down on the paper. Now that's a bad thing for a lawyer and that's one of the things we try to teach in law school because what lawyers do is express. The challenge of a law school exam isn't just knowing it, but being able to show someone you know it. If you show up into court and you're arguing a contracts case and you are the Roscoe Pound of contracts law, if you know every contracts case ever decided, but you have no ability to actually communicate your knowledge to the judge or the jury, you won't do your client a lot of good. What's sad about law school, it seems to me, is that we take all these very bright, energetic, high achievers people who've done well all their lives, and we put them in this shaker, and we pour them out, and we rank them. So you always have to have a material benefit? You always do. Okay, yes. I was kind of saying this, and there's like this part now. I was looking for like so a promissory restitution. Nick, where do you have restitution? I got like me. restatement 158. <laughs> And then restitution under statute of frauds, 375. 
That is that was right after statement of restitution. Right yeah, after Lemmy Savage that said. All right, tell me this: Are you guys going to differentiate between implied in fact and implied in law? I probably will not. It has to be an action and okay. an action. And the person must not have been able to do that. Where'd they go? The Corey's house. Really? I think he's like, yeah, you can come, but uh, it's our study you're here constantly. Thanks. It's messed up. I would not be there anymore. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't get anything out of it. I hate group study. I spent over $400 on study aids. I bought all the tapes. All these examples and explanation books. You bought them for all four. Last minute. I've read over probably 500 pages of that stuff too. It's helpful, but I wish I wouldn't have wasted my time on it. In contracts, we have, we're responsible for 705 pages of our textbook for one test. This is like, I don't know how many, like probably 12 chapters, 705 pages. My brain hurts. It's just all just built on itself to this great mass of knowledge. I think all the professors say, you know, hey, you guys have to realize C's are good grades here. You know, and everyone goes, oh yeah, I'd love to get a C. And in the back of their mind, they're going, but actually, yeah, I'm totally gonna get an A. I've got three things going for me, and that's that I've taken a final before A. I don't stress out very easily, B, and if I do stress out, I can deal with it. It's amazing, people here that are like, already starting to freak out, and I'm like, dude, why are you, I mean, what's the point in stressing? Don't they realize it's not gonna do anything positive for you? Having the knowledge isn't always as beneficial as you think. You could be the smartest person in the world, and that's not going to help you if your analysis on this final is not up to par. I'll be here all Exhausted. It's brutal to write for three and a half hours in a row. I got done ten minutes early, but it's just unreal to sit down for three and a half hours and focus so intently and get everything put on paper. I'd be even more elated when they're all gone, but just this one, I'm happy. Starting con law right now. You just to. finished. Yeah, I'm gonna start right now. No break. 
No. Any brakes? Are you serious? No brakes. This just got me figured out how to do this thing. Because I started running out of time and I go, oh, that tower had gone. So I kept going as fast as I could. I know I can just feel it <clears throat> like it, it in three hours it just became more competitive and maybe it's just that in three hours it just became real that we're all gonna put something down on a paper and some of us will reap rewards from it and some of us will reap detriment from it There's a lot of nervousness going on and uh, a lot of wasted energy going on right now. The game is not necessarily knowing everything, it's knowing what not to know. But if you don't know what you need to know, it's all over the place. It's all over the place and there's no way to win. People are spending all day, every day in the library. Some people are staying up till four studying. I just don't function on that little amount of sleep. So. I think calm loss tough, and it's not supposed to be easy. And I felt like I've learned a lot, I just don't know it's something that I can convey on paper very well, especially when you're crunched for time. I, mean, I think that's a subject you need time to think about. Coming to law school was enough pressure. I just don't want anything else there. What if you get this far and blow it? Sex marriage. I knew he was gonna use it. I felt I felt really good about that. If I don't get an A in that class, I'll be pissed. It's like here, you have a page. Uh, you should have my word. You should have done every word. He'll read it and realize that. Really? Because I mean, my head like a brain dead. Yeah. Okay, because you realize that our page limit was 2.5 pages. Yeah, but written bigger than... No, because I wrote out the first line. I wrote out the line that I typed, it took up half a line. I feel bad if that's true, but I mean... I don't think I do. Well, I mean, I do. I know. What do you think? I think my answer is a fifth grade answer, because I had three lines to write it in. And everyone in our group finished early. Finished within an hour. I finished in 30 minutes. Hey, when you type, you can do it so much faster. Well, that's all right. I'll complain on the context class if that's why I made an F, because I didn't get to type it. If I would have had more time to do it, I think I could have put together better answers. That hurt. That just, that spanked me hard. <laughs> I don't know how I did. We'll see. Probably, I think, B range, probably. I don't think I did worse than, I did better on this one than in contracts coming out, I feel like. So, I'm move on to Supreme. Today is December 12th, and I got a C- on con law, and I got a B or a B plus on contracts, depending on how he curves it. That's fact, right there. Ask me on February 12th what how I got. How shocked are you gonna be if it's different? Huh? How shocked are you gonna be if it's different? If you have it all figured out- They're in predict- less, less, than first, what, less than one semester. I'm special. <laughs> Corey's special. Cory knows. Cory knows. It's a cloud. I think I failed con law, and that's about all I know right now. Not much.
six hours a.m. Yeah. Am I stressed? Yes. I'm trying to get to bed, but I didn't get to bed until 2.30 because I was thinking. So I'll probably fall asleep until 2.30. But I was just... If Swank sees this, I would like to know why you torture us and keep us in there today. Thank you. I think students sort of consider it a rite of passage uh, here at OU as to getting through my six hour exam. Actually, what I do is I write a, an exam that you can complete in three and a half hours. I tell the students that what I want them to do is to relax, uh, take time to think about the exam, make an outline of their, of their answers, and then write them down. I'm, I'm interested in more the thought process than, than the hurried process of writing something uh, on a piece of paper. Most finish it within, oh, probably four, four and a half hours, or some stay to the bitter end. Attention. And then I forget my glasses and I can't see without them. I'm that old. <laughs> so we'll see how civil procedure goes today. They have a six hour exam. Like a five hour one. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Right for six hours. Oh, yeah. I went through eight pencils. How many hours did you write for? Six. Six straight. I don't think Kate did anyone get done early. But you just walk away with a feeling like you just you just couldn't do it. It's just. Uh, there's just so much there, there's so many details. Um, I don't know. 
I guess for three quarters of the way is over, but I don't know. I'm gonna have to teach myself torts in two days, I tell you. <laughs> Well, at all, so bear with okay. me. Sure. Um, if there's damages, you're liable for those. If not, you're liable for nominal damages. There has to be their damage to the quality value um, of the uh, chattel or a substantial deprivation of it, but not substantial enough for it to be conversion. What else? Relationship. Re the relationship. Customs and usages. Customs and usages. And necessity. Okay, the necessity. What's emergency service? Try again. I had told the kids I would return to being who I am. And they was like, today's your last final. I was like, you got it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that was brutal. Oh man, I'm exhausted. I really, I couldn't write more still. I had some issues left, but I just was exhausted and I couldn't go back and do anymore. Like I really don't know how I did on that test. Cause I was just so tired of writing the same thing over and over. It's over, I'm going skiing, going to Fort Worth, and uh, ready, I'm glad. Very, very excited. To a bar, I have a couple drinks, and go home and sleep until January 14th. I don't know. I think we're gonna go grab a glass of wine. But hi, call, call me later and tell me what y'all are doing. I feel like I know a lot about the law, <laughs> and I just hope I can keep some of that. I don't know if it's them beating us or us beating ourselves trying to get those scenarios put together right and it all put out in our head. And, you know, that's something I gotta fight somewhere. The first semester is finished. Very few students come to law school and fail or you know get kicked out or put on probation. That happens to very few students. But a, a number of students don't do as well um, academically in terms of grades, and for many jobs, it affects their future. So I think students are very concerned. I think the one issue they're the most concerned about uh, is, is grades. First semester grades become important because to the extent first year students work after the first year, those are the only grades. It's the only thing you have to show an employer. Well, here is how I did on my first series of exams. One of the things students don't focus on, because they're students. They haven't been out there in the real world, at least uh, even if they had a job before they came to law school, they've not been in the law business before. One of the things they don't focus on is that all this hoopla is about a job for the summertime after the second year or about their first job out of law school. But the thing is, is once you start working, your grades don't matter at all anymore, ever again. So, and what really matters um, when once you're a lawyer are all kinds of things that are not tested. For example, your ability to get along with people, um, your common sense. I try to say to first year students that they shouldn't let law school define who they are. It just isn't up to the task. You can't begin to capture all the important values and experiences that make up who you are. Many of the most successful lawyers and the most people who have the most successful careers with a law degree are people who didn't do as well in law school as perhaps they should have done. Use it as a learning experience. Get better at it. And for heaven's sake, the other side of that coin is also true. Don't go thinking you're God's gift to anything just because you did well on some law school exams. Be humble. Be grateful. Be humble. Do your best you can. Life's too short to deal with arrogant people. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> oh! 
people will quit after they get their grades. There will be people that don't come back. It's so much different than anything I've encountered before. I don't want this on camera. People have been mentioning grades throughout the whole week, but today, I mean, you could tell it's different. The system is designed to build up this intensity, and so you, you know, I'm, I, I have to believe that statistically you're going to get some people crashing on the sides because of the ten intensity. I got three B's, a B plus in passing. I didn't get any C's, dude. That's I'm really happy. <laughs> I'm telling you, the most grateful thing is I didn't pass out when I didn't see the straight A. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. I didn't fall out on the floor and die. So, I, you know, I had prepared myself enough. Even though I did really, you know, well and towards it, said pro, like I said, I just have no clue at this point because I don't know how I did as compared to other people. So. I never want to see that transcript, ever. Ever. Here you read every day and you brief and you're like, what the hell happened? It's so frustrating. Ugh. I'm going to cry. <laughs> see where I didn't do well. I kind of expected it. Would you rather look at something else? That's a disappointment. <sighs> Yes, sir. I had to do something, but there was something I forgot to tell you. Hmm. Um. That you let me know no matter what? No. <laughs> it's, it's something else. I went to school all day yesterday. I was like, I've got, you know, I'm not quitting. You just get so caught up in what those grades are. And you think, that's who I am, what that says. Like, you know, I don't know. And you shouldn't, but you do. Maybe next semester. Nate, as I drool on my pen, maybe next semester. I mean, it's over, that semester's behind me, and I can look to this next one. Now it all becomes about finding the right clerkship that, in spite of grades, will can get you a better second year internship which can get you a better job offer so yeah I got some closure Clo <laughs> I am a law student uh, I care about certain things and I found out that I care about I care less about others and uh, uh, just move forward I got two and a half years that's a long time <laughs> It's really okay. It really is okay. Life is about much, much more. And when I leave this building, I make straight A's in all other areas of my life. So it's okay. It's okay. start with the SBA president, Stephanie Simon. Okay. 
I'm Corey. I wanted to talk to you guys. I talked to the now two L's last year. Um, and the reason I did is uh, two years ago at this time, when I was in your position, I realized that I was wholly unprepared um, for what you're about to experience. Um, <laughs> really, I, I think the most important thing is helping you all un understand a little perspective change. Um, and I had heard it and heard it and heard it, and I was like, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> oh, everyone's going to make B's and C's. Yeah, you haven't met me. <laughs> and um, apparently, they had met me, and uh, I'm that girl. So um, now, Last year at this time when we got, or two years ago, when I got my grades, um, there was this guy doing a documentary on the law school experience. And he followed around eight first years for the entire year. And he asked all, all if he could go check us, like video us checking our grades. And everyone's like, absolutely not. I'm like, yeah, why not? Sure, I'm gonna, I'm fine, I'm special, <laughs> no. Um, so there's a video of me that can't be shown now because there's profanity in it. Um, and, and there's like great gnashing of teeth and tears. And, um, and I was just talking to my friend about it. I've seen the clip and it, it is a little completely pathetic. Um, <laughs> my son walks in and he can tell that I'm upset. And he's like, hey mom, I just wanted to tell you something. And I'm like, yeah, what's up? What's up? And I'm trying not to look at the computer screen. And at four, he's discerning enough to look at the computer screen and realize I just totally bombed. And he like looks at the screen, and he looks at me, and he looks at the screen. He said, I just, I just wanted to tell you. And I said, that you love me no matter what? And he goes, no. <laughs> um, he said, I wanted to tell you this. And he gave me a hug. And it made everything, it made it better for a few minutes. <laughs> Who am I kidding? But, um, but it did, for a moment of clarity, remind me Family is so much more important. You know, Tepker does this big talk at the beginning of the year about why law matters. I'm here to tell you why law doesn't matter. Law doesn't matter because your health matters, because your family matters, because your friends matter. If you want to get a job, the most important thing you can do is be nice and respectful to the people around you. The most important thing for me was I got caught up in why other people came to law school, not why I came to law school. And I came and said, you know what, I'm just taking one for the team. I'm just going to go to law school, get the JD, and that's all that matters. All that matters is the JD. And then I got here, and everyone around you is like, yeah, yeah, well, I, I'm really going to try and make Dean's List. And yeah, I'm definitely going to be Order of the Coif. And I'm so Order of the Barristers. And I was like, dude, I'm Order of the Friendly. What is that going to get me? Like, 
Um, and it's really easy to get drawn into that because it's constantly around you and everyone around you is talking about it. Remember why you came here because whatever you came here to do, no matter what your grades are, you can leave here and do that. I mean, Johnny Cochran, bottom of his class. I feel like we're soul brothers. I mean, <laughs> it's every one of you is going to be successful and every one of you is going to do great things if you remember why you and you alone came here. So, thank you. Thank you.